Hello and happy Wednesday, veterans. Uh, thank you for spending some time with us today. Before we get started um, with today's topic, sound off in the comments. Let us know uh, where you're tuning in from and what branch and what years you served. Yeah, how's everyone doing? Let's let's see some comments in the chat. We'll wait here about five minutes. Let uh, let folks join because I know you know life happens. It comes at you fast, so uh, not everybody's here on time. And we want to give as many veterans as possible the chance to uh, kind of sit in on this and um, learn from our experience. You know, um, today's today's subject is um, you know what to do before you leave the military. So uh, you know, lots of lots of good information here. And uh, we will hopefully educate some of those folks that are still active duty um, or still uh, actively serving in the Guard and Reserve, et cetera. So hopefully we uh, are able to educate and uh, help some folks on their journey to, uh, to success. U.S. Army still serving in New York. Welcome, Edwin. Thank you for your continued service. I got out uh, three years ago, so I uh, went through all this and I was lucky enough to, uh, you know, to not have to go through the whole VA, you know, rigmarole. I went across from SFL TAPS, dropped my paperwork and got 100% rating uh, basically as soon as my terminal leave was over. So I was one of the lucky ones. Yeah, we, we got to it right away and uh, didn't get into to introductions. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm still in the reserves currently and uh, uh, still uh, recently just got off mobilization. Um, oh, we'll get into introductions here in about five minutes. No worries. <clears throat> oh, looks like we lost him. Welcome, David. Welcome, Lee. Thank you guys for your service past and present. Well, Lee, looks like you're coming up on retirement. Army National Guard, South Carolina, 2001 to present. So been in for quite a while there, brother. Heck yeah. Hopefully you're to take care of yourself at this point as you wind down your last uh, last few years in. Make sure you're getting all those appointments and uh, getting everything logged. And we'll obviously go over that here in a little bit. Just want to let a, you know let these next couple of minutes roll through. So folks can get in and then we'll get started with our introductions and uh, kind of a little bit about our uh, VACI elite program. And then we'll go into the topic of the day. And I do apologize for my voice uh, here in the Midwest with the constant weather change and uh, came back from uh, I was on a I was at a destination wedding in, uh, in the South Pacific and uh, came back and my fiance got a little sick and I. Ended up uh, being a little under the weather the last few days. I'm, I'm feeling better now. Just my voice hasn't returned to me yet. So I do apologize if I sound like Kermit the Frog, folks. That's all right, brother. You sound just fine. And uh, <laughs> Lee, I'll, I'll say you're you're in a good spot, you know, being the guard. Hey, I, I spent, that's where I started my career in uh, Minnesota Guard, 34th ID, um, but currently in the, in the, in the reserve. So we'll, we'll, we'll hit on that. You know, how do you transition effectively? Um, we'll, we'll go into that. And then my battle over here, um, he, he'll talk about his transition through, through the active service. Um, we'll kind of shake and shake and bake this. Absolutely. We'll give, uh, give everybody about another minute to get in here. Good to see some familiar faces. Obviously I uh, love coming in and hanging out with some veterans and able to, uh, educate and to kind of talk about our experience and, um, you know, stuff moving forward. And I'm learning from you folks every day. I learned from, uh, folks like Dr. Sean and, you know, everybody else here at VACI. And I'm glad you guys are with us today. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started. It's five past the hour. Not accredited agents, VSOs, attorneys, or any other entity recognized by the Department of Veterans Affairs. And we are not affiliated with the VA in any way. VA Claims Insider is an education-based coaching and consulting company for disabled veterans exploring eligibility for increased VA disability benefits and to wish to learn more about that process. ...in our referral network for medical examinations and independent medical opinions for a wide range of disability conditions. All right, now that we got that out of the way, I'll go ahead and uh, let Coach Dr. Sean uh, introduce himself, and then uh, I will tell you a little about me after that. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Sean Jordan, 
I uh, currently an Army Reservist. I originally started my career in, uh, I, I enlisted in uh, 2012. I was a, I was a medic um, in the Minnesota Army National Guard. When I commissioned, I commissioned right into to the reserve where I'm, I'm still currently serving. Uh, currently the, the commander of the 652nd Multi-Rail Bridge Company. Love it. I'm still, still currently serving. Uh, and we, we just got off a of deployment. So I'm, I'm intimately familiar with the, uh, the, the, the mode process. And so I'll, I'll talk through, you know, how do you effectively go through the mode process and how do you do it right? I'll say a number of my soldiers are now at a hundred percent, um, because we, we, we talk through the process, you know, how do you do it effectively? What do you do? Um, especially as you're transitioning. And then uh, if we have time, um, we won't have enough time for questions, but, um, we can also talk through retirement as well. Um, you know, how do you transition through service? How do you do it right? But uh, I'll pass it over here to my battle. Uh, who will uh, talk about himself? Absolutely. Hey, thanks, Dr. Sean. Um, my name is Andrew Porter. I'm a coach here at VA Claims Insider. I hail from Kansas City, Missouri, uh, by way of Florida, growing up, born and raised there. Um, I was in the Army uh, most recently, and I got out in 2019 where I was an Airborne Infantry NCO, uh, multiple tours to Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm 100% combat, uh, I'm 100% rated uh, for combat PTSD and then a litany of other, of other physical conditions. And, um, you know, I, I came to VACI uh, by, you know, about a year and a half ago, um, really close friends with uh, uh, senior veteran coach Donnie Witten. Shout out, Donnie. And, uh, you know, he just could not stop talking about this uh, the movement here at VACI and how great it was that veterans are helping veterans and that, uh, you know, we have this big family here and that we're just trying to get veterans the benefits they deserve. And that's why I'm here. And that's why I love it so much. And uh, I hope to continue serving veterans and continue in my, you know, serving the country, our country in my own little way until I can't do it anymore. So uh, again, thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Dr. John, for your continued service or Dr. Sean. Sorry. We got Dr. Sean and Dr. John with here at VACI. Thank you, Dr. Sean, for your continued service uh, as you're still serving in the guard and welcome back from your deployment, brother. I'm glad, uh, glad you, you and your troops made it home safely and uh, let's get started. Yeah, right on. If you don't mind, I'll kick it off. We'll kind of start with uh, kind of the for National Guard and Reservists. We can kind of talk through, you know, coming back from mobilization. How do you do it? How do you do it right? How do you take advantage of it? Um, and then we can we can transition into, you know, going from the active side because there's some parallels. But, uh, you know, there's also um, some some specificities on, on the active side as well. Um, right. Real, real quick, uh, Dr. Sean, I just got to remind you, we got let's uh, let's talk about the, the elite program first and then uh, we'll get into the get into all that stuff uh, after that. All right. So uh, tell us a little about the VACI elite program, brother. Yeah. Yeah. So you're provided, you know, one on one coaching. So you're, you're, you're assigned a coach. Um, we'll, we'll go through, you know, the, the full um, eight steps claim claim process. Uh, we'll go through, you'll, um, uh, be assigned a claim and, uh, or we'll, we'll go through the, 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 the claim decision and process and, and we'll assist you every step of the way. Absolutely. So, you know, the big, the big awesome thing about, uh, being a VACI elite member is that you get that coach, right? But not only do you get like Dr. Sean as your coach or me as your coach, but you get our whole team. Um, if I run into a roadblock or Dr. Sean runs into a roadblock, we get, to, you know, we branch out and we say, Hey, you know, there's how many coaches are there here? 30 something coaches. I think at, here at VACI, I could be wrong. Um, you know, the, but the, the whole team and all the resources. So you, not only do you get with the elite program, um, a coach at, at the team, but you also get the endless resources that we have here. It seems, um, you know, whether it's instructional videos, whether it's a military, uh, you know, disability made easy, um, whether it's the blogs, the just all the educational resources that we have, plus you know you, the walkthrough of the of the claim submissions, the walkthrough of the CMP prep, the classes, the live classes that we have. So you know it's it's uh, there's there's live classes via Zoom every single day, three times a day, except for Sundays and Saturdays. Um, there are classes on Saturdays, but the Monday through Friday, three times a day. Um, there's coffee with the coaches in the morning, every single morning, Monday through Friday at eight a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and then obviously the claim submission, CMP prep, uh, you know, uh, Q and a, all those classes, it's, it, it's just awesome. So you not only, you're going to get your coach's point of view, your coach's advice or everything, but if you want to sit into those classes and have, pick the brains of other coaches live, you can go ahead and do that too. So those specialty classes come up as well. So HLRs, sleep apneas, high value claims, et cetera. So being a, uh, an elite member with here at VACI, you're getting all of that stuff. 
And what does it start off with, right? Dr. Sean, you know, alluded to that earlier, a 30 minute discovery call. So, you know, if you want to learn more, you know, you can schedule a 30 minute free discovery call and take uh, talk to one of our team members by going to VACIfree30.com, uh, VACIfree30.com. Uh, um, and then um, uh, really that's it for the, uh, for the uh, intro here, Dr. Sean. Now you can get into your uh, the uh, topic, the things to do before you leave service uh, on the Garden Reserve side. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, in the zone. Um, and I'll so, go active you know, for anybody that's wondering after that. Sorry. Kind of, kind of focusing on you know while while so you're 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 overseas, right? You're you're focusing on the mission, you know, m- mission first. But you know, when when you're preparing to transition, uh, it, it's a trans transitory state. Um, and you know, you, you, need to create a plan. So, um, there, there's three steps and, and you know, I, I have create a plan. You want to communicate the plan and you want to execute the plan. And so I'm, I'm going to break all that up for you. Um, but when it comes to creating the plan, you have to understand that failing to plan is planning to fail. So you want to, you want to create, you know, you want to get a piece of paper down and you want to write down everything that's going on. Um, you want to do a complete head to toe assessment before you even uh, begin to talk to other people about what's going on. Uh, you know, you, you could have sleep problems, you could have headaches, you could have um, maybe some some IBS or what. Uh, try to understand really what's going on because you got to be able to start communicating it, and you want to start to build the evidence. And I'll, I'll get into some of that stuff later. But first things first, you want you want to have a good understanding of self, and so that's that's where create the plan. Um, then understand that no plan survives first contact. So you want, you want a backwards plan and, and you want to create it early. Um, so this is before, whether you're leaving country or it could be a CONUS mobilization, whenever it is, you, you want to do it before you leave wherever you're at prior to getting to MOP site. Um, the next thing is you want to communicate the plan. Um, so you don't get what you don't ask for. There, there is a ton of opportunity that's available for you. Um, and I'll, I'll get into some of those resources, but uh, biggest thing for you is, is don't surprise your leadership, um, whether it's, it's your first line leader, um, whether it's a, a squad leader, your gunny sergeant, your tech sergeant, uh, your commander, first sergeant, whoever it is, don't, don't blindside them, you know, better to be transparent, be vulnerable, be open, be honest, let them know, Hey, this is what's going on. This is what's impacting me because it's, it's, they, they will support you, um, you know, we oftentimes think that it's better to just not disclose a problem because that's going to somehow make things better. And oftentimes that's just not the case. Um, so going through doing that complete head to toe, oftentimes people are going to assess, assist you, um, whether it's you got to go and see sick hole. So you want to go and build the medical documentation and I'll, I'll get into that later. But um, you don't get what you don't ask for. And then there's a ton of programs that are congressionally appointed for you. So you want to take advantage of them and then make sure your leadership again is tracking. And then when we're talking about execution, um, understand that it is okay to be selfish. Uh, When you're transitioning, you're in a transitory state. So understand that um, you know, your, your, your leadership, you're, they're thinking about mission. They're thinking about the group. They're thinking about the, the, we, not the me. Um, however, you need to think about the me, um, you need to make sure that you are squared away. Um, and, and then that's multifactored, right? So for here at VACI, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, particularly medical evidence, you know, we're looking at, you know, caseload, but you know that for you, that's going to be multifaceted, especially if you're still in, in an active status. You know that could be your um, whether it's your PCS award, your retirement award, your whatever it is. You want to make sure your 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 ducks are all covered. Um, and, but particularly medical evidence, you want to make sure you're, you're going in, getting your butt to the doctor, getting your butt to the TMC, going and seeing a medic, um, getting your soap notes all built out, just getting getting all of your ducks in a row. Um, and understand that that's okay. It is okay to be selfish. It is your future because once, once you're gone, um, as they say in the army, the army keeps rolling along. Um, and then attend as many classes as possible. Um, this, this is really about filling your toolkit. Uh, so 
there, there's a lot, and I mentioned, you know, there's a lot of congressionally appointed programs for you. So I, I talk, you know, resume writing. Uh, there's a lot of soldiers that go out of the military, uh, sailors, airmen, but they go out of the military without a plan. Uh, they also go out of the military without a, a, a quality resume. Um, and there's a lot of, of programs out there that, that they'll, they'll write the resume for you. But, you know, when a soldier leaves the military without a resume or with, without any type of assistance, they'll leave and it'll say, you know, all of their military awards and it'll say all of their schoolings, all of the things that they've done. But it doesn't it doesn't translate to a civilian job. So some civilian employer and, and the veterans on the call will likely understand what I'm talking about. But for the service members that I'm, that I'm talking to, um, the your civilian counterparts won't necessarily translate what you do in the military to um, to what you do in, in the military service. So you're going to want to take advantage of, of the resume resources that are available to you. Uh, the Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program, you're going to want to take full advantage of that. Um, oftentimes it gets a bad rap. Uh, it, it can kind of get the notion of you know, you have to go sit in these classes and, you know, well, you can fill out all these spreadsheets or you can re-enlist and, you know, they'll put recruiters in the background so you, you can sign these contracts. But there, there's a lot of great information that's there um, when you go. So it, it, they're very, very, very helpful. Uh, and I, I would highly encourage you to take advantage of them um, because they're, they're going to set you up for long-term success if you pay attention. Or you can fast forward through all the online trainings get through them as quickly as possible, play on your phone while you're going to the mandatory briefs and not take any advantage while, while you're there. Either way, you're going to have to sit through them and go through them because they are congressionally mandated. But I do highly encourage you to take advantage of what's there. Hey, Dr. Sean, so real quick, uh, for Guard and Reservists, there's a little bit different process when it comes to gathering medical evidence, right? So a lot of times, um, you know, Guard and Reserve members aren't going to be at a place where they're going to go to a military facility to get their to get their injuries looked at, right? So, um, if if a military member in the Guard and Reserve were hurt on, you know, in the in all while, while on duty while uh, while on orders, uh, what would they do as far as you know getting it that investigation so that that documentation is there to get that service connected? Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's a great question. Um, so it, it depends on where you're at and, and what the parameters of the situation are. So if you're deployed, you're going to go to a, a medical treatment facility um, or you're going to go to a clinic or wherever wherever you're at, everything is covered. Um, and, and generally speaking, even if you're on an, uh, an order in an off-duty site location, you will have TRICARE Reserve Select. So you'll be able to go to uh, uh, a local clinic and it'll be covered under, under TRICARE and it'll still fall under, um, everything will be covered under your order. Everything is good to go at that point. However, where, where you're getting at um, is, is under a line of duty investigation. So where a lot of reservists will fall under um, in, in terms of an off-site injury that doesn't occur, uh, where you're off in the boonies and you have nowhere else to go and you have to prove liability, which is which is fault to the military, you'll have to undergo what's called a line of duty investigation. And, and that's where uh, the process and the mechanism, and this also goes for uh, annual training. Uh, this even goes for M-Day or TPU soldiers who are on the weekends. You can still determine liability as well. You, you still bucket this. Um, so th this applies to you if you're listening in. Um, you'll start the line of duty investigation process prior to going to the, the um, local hospital or clinic. So your commander, your first sergeant, your, your medic, whoever's going to help you fill out the paperwork, you want to start the paperwork at the, the, the mechanism of, of injury, where, wherever it starts. So you typically want to make sure the paperwork goes with you out to wherever you're going. So if you're going to annual training, um, you want to make sure that, you know, in, in your aid bags, or in, in your uh, talk kicks, kits, we know wherever you're going, you're bringing this stuff with you. So you can quickly fill it out on the fly, send it with the soldier because you want the commander to sign it. So then when it goes with the soldier to the MTF, the, the cl uh, clinician can sign it as at, when they're with the patient. Because what you don't want to have to do is try to fill it out after the fact, after the, the soldier or airman uh, has already left the facility and try to get signatures after, the, it just doesn't happen. That's when they have these incomplete investigations that stagnate for years, that they, they try to redo the paperwork. It just doesn't work. 
Um, so I, I highly encourage you to get uh, ahead of that process so you can determine liability to the military um, for injuries that happen in service. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, anything else you wanted to add for Guard or Reservist before I get into the active duty side of things? As far as transitioning um, out? Yeah, really, really quickly. Um, so the, the DOD Skills Bridge, try to take advantage of that. It's a paid internship with the Fortune 500. So if you can get in on that, um, it's you know typically within 180 days. Uh, if, if your commands will allow you to go, again, this is where the communication aspect is, is, is key. Um, but then on, on the medical evidence piece, prior to your discharge, uh, within 180 days to 90 days from your discharge, you can file a disability benefits discharge claim. Highly encourage you to, um, to, to file your claim. And this is where that backwards planning piece comes in. Because if you have all the evidence, you're ready to go file it. And this is where you can get your initial claim in and done at the time uh, of leaving your, your mob station. So your initial claim is done. You're aware of what your rating is. And if you need to, to play catch up, you don't get the rating you like, something doesn't come back the, the way you want it to, you can instantly throw another claim in right, right from the MOB site. You can, you can go right back and, and everything is, is still within uh, a claimable distance of uh, act, your active duty time. So you're still on your terminal leave or, or within your terminal leave period. Um, and then also have your, have your commander uh, help sign documentation. So uh, sworn statements, uh, for anything that, that happens to you while on active duty um, it, it is very, very helpful. Also, uh, going through and, and having the medic fill out a soap note can be very, very helpful for any, anything that happens to you while either overseas or in a training environment just to, to determine liability. Well, what a lot of veterans do after they leave is they try to get buddy letters. Buddy letters are, are very, very helpful, but they, they, they're, they're not, it's not medical evidence. It also doesn't prove causality. Um, whereas if you can get it at the time of the incident from, from somebody who's got firsthand knowledge and experience, who's in a key leadership role or a medical role, it's a, it's a different case. And then kind of the, the last uh, two points I wanted to make one, when in doubt, take the reins. Um, so with that, uh, pre-draft your paperwork, um, it's, it's helpful for your, uh, particularly those in leadership roles, um, because everyone gets busy, um, you know, your, 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 your squad leaders, your, uh, your first sergeants, your commanders, your, your tech sergeants, you know, that they, they all have a lot of, a lot of subordinates that they need to manage. Um, everyone is a priority, but uh, no one is more of a priority than you. Um, so if, if you are your own priority, uh, take care of yourself. And, uh, if you can make your, your supervisor, you know, lead up make your supervisor's job a little bit easier. It'll, it'll make your information flow a little bit faster. Um, and then kind of the last point is for shape and, and dental. So these are going to be transitory periods when you go to um, out processing. So these are going to be two of your final stations before you finally get your 214 and uh, leave the, the, the mobilization platform. Um, with that, go into med pros prior uh, and, and fill out your 2807 and your 2808, which which is the, the shape form. Um, and, and with that, be honest. You know, th this is where it goes into your complete head to toe assessment. Um, don't necessarily just fill it out, answering yes to everything and expect I mean, th that'll get you through the mob site fast. Sure. Um, but what you want to do is you want to be thorough. You want to be honest. You want to make sure that you're good to go. Because what's going to happen, especially with a lot of veterans that, that we work with and a lot of veterans um, who, who are here in the chat, and, and please feel free to, to chime in veterans who are on the call. Um, but, you know, what happens after you leave, if you mark yes for everything, you're good to go is 20, 30 years from service. You're going to try to prove how your, your knee injury, your back injury um, are, are caused by the military. And you've got nothing to show for it because you were never seen at sick hall. You uh, never went to seek any treatment. And when you left service, everything was fine because you checked off. Yes, everything was good to go when you were leaving. Um, so I, I, if you have a pain of any kind, be honest, be vulnerable. It's not going to prevent you from serving. Um, it, it's not going to. There, there's, there's a difference between deployability and disability. People tend to relate them, but they're the two very different concepts. 
Um, so I, I highly encourage you to, to just be honest. It's, it's not going to be the end of your military career. It's not going to be the end of your future. You're going to be just fine. And I, and I will say just as a closing comment, if, if you are ending your, uh, your career, um, download all of your stuff. It is infinitely harder to try to access both your medical records and your uh, administrative records once you leave service. So highly that's recommend that you, you download everything and uh, you'll be just fine. That's all that's I got, kind of brother. Perfect, that's kind of a perfect segue into what I was getting at. So look, folks, I joined the military in 2014 or 2004 rather, and then I got out in 2019. So joined kind of early, right in the, when GWAT was, was kicking off and then I left right at the end. And sick call was looked looked down upon right it was it was frowned upon to go to sick call especially if you're in combat arms um and i understand that mentality i completely understand it but nobody's going to take care of you but you so and i would say especially in your last year that you're in the military if you're approaching that last 365 days start going to the doctor be like you know look take i gotta take care of myself because nobody's gonna do it but me so go make those appointments um, go see mental health if you need to go see, you know, go, go get those ouchies and those, those owies looked at. All right. Because again, you need medical evidence. You need something in your records that says, you know, was seen for this condition. It's diagnosed. It's there. It's in your medical records. And then about six months out, request those medical records so that you have a hard copy of them. Like uh, Dr. John said, I've got a hard copy of mine and I've got them on a PDF file. Um, on a, on a disc, on a uh, thumb drive somewhere. So get to the doctor before transitioning out of the military, get those medical records and then file a disability, a VA disability. If you can, before you get out, what I did six months before I got out, um, you know, you start out processing, you know, in the army at Fort Bragg, I was, they have a giant soldier support center there. SFL taps is right across the hallway from the VA office. What I did after I graduated SFL taps is I walked over there with my medical records dropped him off and said, uh, I'd like to file a VA claim. Um, about a couple of weeks later, I had a, a head to toe physical. And then um, I had a, and then a few weeks after that, I had a mental health exam that, that I cut out for a second there. Oh, okay. Sorry. It looked like I cut off for a second. So I had those two exams and that was it. I had, uh, I had 30 days of terminal leave that I took. As soon as my terminal leave was over, I got a packet in the mail saying I was hundred percent P and I am a wanna, I get it. It's 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 rare that that happens, but it can, and I'm walking living proof of it. So take care of yourself before you get out. I you know, 15 years of active duty service. Um, you know, I had some you know being in combat arms, throwing my body out of airplanes, um, deploying, you know, going hard in the gym and doing all these other things. I had a few ouchies here and there, um, and it didn't hinder my career at all. I was able to you know go through physical therapy for a knee, a shoulder. I was out of the game for maybe a month or two at a time. And, you know, I, I still promoted, I still was good to go. Um, and I still did my job and I, I wasn't non-deployable ever. Um, you know, I just took care of myself. And, you know, if you're, if you're, especially in a long career, you want to take care of yourself. Your, your, your commanders and your first sergeants don't want you to, to just, you know, live with torn ACLs and labrums and, uh, you know, all that stuff, because then you're just worthless, right? You're, so you got to get to sick call. You got to take care of yourself, make those appointments, um, you know, Go get seen, go get that medical evidence squared away and do that before you get out. Don't wait until, oh man, I've got six weeks left and then, you know, want to do that stuff. You've got to give yourself some time. So if you're approaching that last year of service, that's when you want to start. All right. So those, you know, those are the first three things. Get to the doctor, get a copy of your medical records and then file your claims. Now, you know, other things that you'd want to, that you want to do before you get out is talk to other fellow service members you know, who witnessed an in-service event. So if something did happen and you're struggling, you know, overseas and deployed and you never went to mental health or anything like that, or you never, you never went and got seen for that, uh, that elbow or that knee or whatever condition you have, you know, talk to those folks, see if they can't write you a personal or write you a uh, buddy letter um, before you even get out. Right. So have that stuff before you leave. If you are running in that time crunch, if you procrastinated and waited, you know, you're still on station with those folks, have them, you know, help, you know, see if they'll write you a buddy letter, um, you know, learned it in another thing, you know, bring the right forms to all your medical appointments. So you should, they should be able to help you there, but go see if you're in, if you're, if you're in a line unit, you know, go see that line medic say, Hey, look, what do I need to bring 
you know, what forms do I need to bring here? Um, you know, call the clinic prior to your appointment, call the, call the hospital prior to your appointment, ask them what you need to bring so that you're not just showing up empty handed and don't know what to do. So you really got to, again, take care of yourself here. Um, you know, cross the, cross the T's, dot the I's, make sure you're prepared for those appointments. Um, learn to translate your military experience. So, you know, going on, moving on past the claims itself, you know, taking care of you, taking care of the entire soldier, Marine, you know, Coast Guardsman, uh, sailor, airman, whatever, uh, the total, that total soldier, all right, that total paratrooper, I'll just use myself as an ex example, it's head to toe, right? So you're not just taking care of your, your VA claims getting out, you're also setting yourself up for your education, maybe your next career move, um, you're going to buy a house. So, you know, make sure that you are able to transfer that stuff. And, and you know, in, typically in SFL TAPS, I, I don't know what the Air Force's version is called or the Marines is called, but, you know, they will have a, a class where you're writing a resume. It was like two or three days when I was there and getting out of the Army. And that was only three years ago. So I, I can only imagine things have probably maybe improved. So you're going to learn to write a resume. Um, as Dr. John or Dr. Dr. John, sorry, Dr. Sean earlier said, you know, they offer these classes. They offer um they offer internships. Uh, I've seen a couple of guys in my units go, you know, the last six months they're in, Hey, you know, the commander will sign off. Yeah. Go get your, uh, your CDL, go get your paramedic license, you know, while they're still active duty. So they're getting sent off to do these programs to transition out of the military and they're taking care of themselves, setting themselves up for their future. Okay. So don't, you know, don't, don't get left behind. Don't, don't allow yourself to be left behind when you do have that power. Um, to, to make a difference in your own life. So, you if know, I can caveat on that too. Sure, please do. You, you, for those of you that are currently serving, take advantage of that. It, especially it, it, when you're leaving out of the military with a job versus leaving the military, you know, potentially homeless without a career is it, night and day. Um, you, the, the, there's a, a, a number of clients that we work with that, that just don't, you, know, you, you leave here in a transitory state and, you know, it's a path to success versus, a, you know, a, a potentially questionable path. Um, you know, these these internships, generally speaking, give you a job or they give you a certification. They, they give you a career right when you leave. Um, you take full advantage of it because every single day we're working with people that just don't take full advantage. Hey, what are you doing? Are you using the DOD skills bridge is uh, where a lot of these pro or the. Uh, uh, the Army Cool Program, uh, at least for, for, on the Army side, uh, is the for the certification um, to to get some of the um, certs that you're you, you'd be looking for. But take full advantage of it. It's what the they're congressionally appointed for. Um, it, it's what you know billions of dollars are are being used to to spend on you to make sure that you're taken care of. So when you reintegrate with society, you're being successful. You're having your best self. Uh, when you leave your service and then, you know, to tack onto that, throw it, you should be applying for your, your VA claim as well, just to add an additional compensation to make sure you're good to go. Just absolutely. And, and, you know, adding on to that, I'm sorry to interrupt doc, but you know, um, for, for like Dr. Sean, I don't know when you started your, I mean, I, I know you came in and probably with an undergraduate degree, but you don't have to wait to leave active duty to start. I don't know how many of, uh, of you folks are still active duty for an extended period of time. I'm guessing not a lot of you are if you're here at VA Claims Insider, but you don't have to wait um, to leave active duty to start your education. While you're still in the military, you can use TA, tuition assistance, to fund your education. And that that benefit pays up for up to 100% of your tuition and fees up to like 250 per credit hour um, and $166 per, sem uh, uh, per semester credit hour. So the best part of that is you can use TA for both undergraduate and graduate programs and certificate programs. So as long as they're offered by an accredited school. So contact your base education. Um, post 9-11 GI Bill, I use that to get my undergrad at Florida State University. Uh, the post 9-11 GI Bill is, is the most powerful tool. Uh, it changed my life, right? Um, you, it's the most one of the most powerful tools you can use to fund your education during your military transition in civilian to civilian life. Um, the benefit paid for 100 percent of my tuition, books, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, and it gave me a, a E5 pay for for housing, right? So you can use that benefit to attend school full time or part time. And you know, I was bartending in school while I was you know while I was getting the uh, the E5 pay, and I was in Florida, so you know, I was uh, just another little piece of change in my back pocket, right? So um, use that post 9-11 GI Bill. Uh, the Yellow Ribbon Program, it's, it's another great thing. Um, it can help cover the cost for higher education for expenses that exceed the VA's maximum 
under VI under the uh, post 9-11 GI Bill, including the high cost for attending a private school. Um, I have a good friend that was in my unit uh, back at Fort Bragg. He's going to Brown. He's an Ivy League student. I mean, just, you know, he went from an 11 Bravo to Papa to an Ivy League student. And I'll tell you what, he's an, he's a yellow ribbon program guy and he is crushing it right now. Super proud of him. Um, the Montgomery GI Bill. I know I don't know a lot of folks that are still using that, um, but, you know, depending on where you are in your life and depending on where you are in your education, sometimes the Montgomery GI Bill might be better off for you or might be better for you. Um, it's available to veterans who enlist uh, for at least two years. Generally, it's for veterans who served before September uh, 10th of 2001. Uh, the benefits include up to 36 months of tuition assistance for things like uh, tuition, fees, books, and supplies, and um, all that kind of stuff. So, and for more uh, for more information, I think uh, our one of our wonderful assistants has been posting links down in the chat box there. Um, veterans Upward Bound Program. That's another one. It's a free federal program that helps veterans prepare for college. The program offers academic tutoring, mentoring, and other services for for, um, for participants that aren't maybe ready yet to go into a university. Um, Vet Tech is a program. Um, it's an it's an innovative program that helps veterans train for high tech careers. It offers twelve months of benefits eligible to, um, to eligible participants in their career fields, including information technology, cybersecurity, and more. So. You know, if you want to get into one of those high tech uh, tech fields, um, absolutely, that is a that is something that you can do. And there's so many, there's so many education benefits, folks. Um, so just get to your Air Force Base, you know, Family Readiness Center, your Army, Military, and Family Life Counseling Center, the Naval Base Fleet and uh, Family Support Program, and the Coast Guard um, Mutual Assistance Programs, and they'll help you get uh, get on on track with your education benefits. Um, and you know. Dr. Sean beat it with a beat, you know, he beat it already with a, with a bat. It's not going to hit the dead horse anymore, but get the most out of your transition assistance programs. Um, the goals and strategies, the benefits and entitlements, the financial planning, the education opportunities, the resources, the employment resources, um, and capstone. So take care of yourself. Nobody's going to do it for you. You've got to take, you've got to set yourself up for success getting out. And, you know, Last but not least, for at least for that little part of my uh, my spiel here, is budgeting. Don't get out of the military and then this transitory space where you are flat broke because you're so used to those two paychecks of the, every month, the first and the fifteenth, and you're all of a sudden, you know, well, my my ETS date is upon me. I don't have a job set up. I don't have, you know, I'm just going back home. You can't rely on that that, that VA benefit. It might not hit yet. You might not have, you, you know, or you might have gotten a lower rating than you thought you were going to have. So, you know, save money that last year, that last year and a half that you're in. I know different folks are coming from different situations in life, whether, you know, you have children or or dependents or, you know, you may have may have gotten yourself into a, you know, a bind financially with some debt. But you've got to at least look at taking care of yourself, setting up some setting up a little bit of savings on the side and um, not getting out without a little bit of a budget, um, um, you know, a little bit of a, a cushion there for you. Um, Dr. Sean, anything else to add to that before we move on? No, I, I mean, that, that was spot on, brother. You know, the, the biggest thing is it is okay to be selfish. Understand it. You know, mm-hmm. you're transitioning. This is all about you. Um, I'll, I'll say on that, communicate. Don't don't blindside anybody because people are going to support you, um, especially your leadership. If, if they know ahead of time, they know in advance, they can plan, they can coordinate, they can adjust around you. They're, they're going to support you. It's when you let them know at the last minute, the day of, uh, that's when you're, you're, you're going to, there's going to be issues. Um, but when they know months in advance, when things are coming up, they know what your intentions are, you're going to get full support. Um, especially the more buy-in you get up your chain of command, you, you get squad leaders, you get platoon sergeants, you get first sergeants, you're good to go. But when, when, when you blindside all of them and you say, well, I'm, I'm transitioning in two weeks, I need to go to all of these appointments, I'm going to be gone. There's going to be a, a, significant, a significant set of problems you're going to face going to all of these things. So we want to make sure you're successful. You are in the right place here. Take advantage of the elite program. Um, we're here if you need it. Um, but we're trying to get you guys ahead of all of this while you're still in service. Um, so please get, get your butt to the doctor, get your butt to medical, go in, get the records while you can. But even if you're out, there's still resources for you. Absolutely. And, you know, I don't, we're, we're coming up on, uh, we got about five more minutes before the Q and a supposed to start, but I really wanted to 
hit a, and especially you know since we were sitting here with a company commander so um we got a unique um you know uh, field of view here um about drafting awards and stuff right so a lot of folks don't realize that some of these awards and decorations that you're getting can help you um, especially depending on if you were deployed and you know combat deployment stuff like that so if you have awards that are due to you um you know i know combat is largely ramped way down right now but if you have awards due to you from actions that you you know um executed overseas or that you you know maybe you got maybe maybe even in in peacetime and you you know you did something extraordinary and there was an accident on a live fire range or something like that right something that could possibly help you with your va claim you know, make sure you get those awards. Make sure you're you're getting with your your um you know I'll, I'll use my platoon leaders or your platoon sergeants, your company commanders. You know, the appropriate level of chain of command that you're in to make sure that everything is documented. It's not all just medical stuff, uh, Doctor John. I'll let you you know kind of elaborate on that since you are a, in a unique position as a company commander. Yeah, well, what I'll say on that, more you know, big picture wise, everything tells a story. Um, so, you know, in, in kind of the, the most severe case scenario, you know, let's say 20 years down the line after service, you're, you're trying to get your disability claim processed. Um, and you're trying to, let's say you're, you're trying to claim post-traumatic stress. Well, if you have an award for like a combat action badge or, uh, maybe like a, a, a some type of, of award for valor sur service, um, and you can prove it, that's, that's all you're going to need. Um, you've got everything right there that shows what you did. You know, maybe you got into a, a, a gunfight or, you know, there was something there that you can prove that you did, that that's all you need. Or maybe it's like a, uh, uh, you, you use your physical fitness test and you can, you can tell a story over time. So we talked about the importance of downloading all of your administrative and medical records before you leave service. So you have all that information. Well, they tell a story over time. Um, so, you know, working with your leadership, making sure that your, your ducks are all squared away before you leave service, you've got all that. So if you want to file like an MST claim, um, very, very sensitive stuff, maybe you don't disclose it before you leave service, but you, you can document what's there. You can document, you know, this incident happened on this date and you can see the performance decrease over time since then. It makes it very easy to walk the dog back. Um, and, and get that claim approved later on down the line. Again, now we're, we're, we're trying to get ahead of that, but you know, there, there are veterans who, you know, they, they, they come from all places. And so that's the importance of doing this stuff. So problems don't uh, show themselves later on down the line. Right. Absolutely. And kind of just to wrap here a little bit before we get into the Q and a, you know, take care of yourselves, folks, download all of your records, request those records, get to the doctor, get educated, take those classes seriously. Okay. Take those transition classes, super, you know, you're, you're going to take what you go in, you're going to take out what you put in, right? How, however much attention you put in, however much studying, note taking, you're going to take out what you put in. All right. So, um, download those, download those records, download those records, download those records, request them, get to the doctor, pay attention and, you know, apply for, apply for your citations. Make sure you're, make sure you're with your leadership and you're, you're getting your due, um, as you get out. And uh, take care of your spouses, right? Take you, you make sure your spouse is taken care of. There's there are spousal citations as well. So if your spouse was active in the FRG or something like that, you know, make sure they're recognized as well. And finally, and this this comes, you know, <coughs> excuse me, as an NCO um, near and dear to my heart, take care of your troops. You have one last chance. You know, if this is our last year, your last six months in, and you're in a leadership position, this is your last chance to make an, an, a really a really positive impact on those troops. And um, so I would suggest you guys, you know, do that, make that last impact, show them the right way, you know, show them what right looks like um, as far as getting out. Don't sham. Don't, don't all of a sudden become, you know, I'm the, I'm a short timer disease. Don't do that. Um, take care of your folks and uh, show them what right looks like. And um, before Q and a, I'll let uh, Dr. Sean or Dr. Sean close with his final thoughts as well. Yeah, just just uh, to caveat on that, you know, I'm going to back up a little bit because I, I'd like to talk just just for a, a few minutes on on retirement, uh, if we can, because what I see oftentimes, especially now, is uh, and, and unfortunately, it, it's for my NCOs, particularly in in non leadership roles, uh, they, they end up getting neglected um, in in terms of due diligence in retirement. So I want to make sure you're taken care of. And so what I will say is 
um, plan accordingly. So when, when you plan to retire, have a plan and, and plan out roughly two years out. Go in. Um, again, this is the same thing. Make sure your plan is communicated. Don't blindside your leadership. Um, when you submit the when your plan is communicated, make sure, you know, take the same due diligence. Um, I, I would pre-draft your retirement award. Again, no one's going to necessarily care about you more than you. Also, no one knows your career better than you. So no one can draft your award better than you. Again, you don't have to be the be all end all, but you can, you can, you can put sample bullets in there. It's kind of like a performance evaluation. You know, you're, you're basically doing your, um, your fit rep or your um, your your NCO uh, support form, you're making sure all, all the templates are in there. You're making someone else's job a little bit easier. It makes things flow much smoother. So at the end of the line, you're making sure that you're walking away with something for your family. Uh, it's not just for you. It's it's also for them. Um, but then the, the last piece is we get into the execution piece. Um, stay in close contact uh, with your chain of command all throughout the, the retirement process, um, particularly your, your admin and your command, because your command has to coordinate a retirement ceremony. Um, that's something that often gets neglected. And so, you know, the, your, your command's focused on mission, you know, mission first. Um, but, you know, this is also important, you know, especially for your troops. You know, uh, Andy, you, 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 you were talking and it, you there's an importance of, of leading and especially for, for the NCOs, you know, they want junior troops want to see that they, they want to see the leader. Um, they, they want to see someone that they respected for a long period of time. And so it, it's important for everybody, but it's, it's gotta be coordinated as well. So making sure it's on, it's on their radar, they're tracking it ahead of time. They can be coordinated in the schedule. Um, and then for admin, just so, you know, there, there's systems that we use. So in the army reserve, we've got EPAT, we're transitioning over to IPSA, um, just so you know where your pack is at in in real time, you're not just letting it sit in some system and have no idea what's going on. You're just trusting someone that everything. No, take it by the reins, follow up on it, make sure it's good to go. Because again, this th this is your time. This is your retirement. Otherwise, these things can stagnate. And maybe you plan to retire on this date, but your packet something happens to it. You don't know what's there. Your admin loses it. Uh, th there's a lot of things that happen. Um, so timelines can get moved in that regard as well if, if you're not following up on it. But the, the last piece I'll say on it is uh, the presidential citation and, and the spousal citation. Uh, so you're, you're eligible for these. And if you don't if you don't request those roughly 90 to 100 days out, um, th those can be missed. And those are very, very important because you're eligible for these benefits. And so if you don't request them, um, they can oftentimes be missed. And that's that, that, that they're very important for you, but then also for your family members. It's a plaque on the wall from the president of the United States. That, that's a person that you support. Um, and then uh, uh, more importantly for your spouse, someone who's supported you for, for all of these years, you know, whether you're away for training or, you know, kind of whatever you're doing and, and you've done through all this time, you know, there, there's someone at home who's had to keep everything else together while you're away. And uh, that, that's very important that they're recognized as well. Um, they may say that everything's fine while you're gone, but uh, that, that's oftentimes not always the case. And so it's important to recognize them as well. That's all I got. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Sean, for that uh, for that last little bit of input there. Um, so, yeah, we'd like to move on into the Q&A. We got about 11 minutes left here um, on the hour. So if um, there's any questions, I'd like to just, you know, say let's not let's uh, try not to be too specific. We don't want to get into the weeds and get super personal. But uh, any general questions you folks may have about the the elite membership program or just transitioning out of the active duty reserve guard or getting ready to retire. Um, kind of we'll keep on theme today with that. So uh, I'd like to answer any questions you folks might have now. Any questions? I have a and question. Like we have Randy. Randy. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. How many uh, sapper slots do you, does your unit give away every year? Um, it's ironic. So we actually just got an email yesterday. We've got two that, uh, they're, they're, they're going unfilled. Um, but normally we, we can meet our quotas. We normally don't, don't have a problem, but, uh, yeah, we've got two that they, they report in about three days. Don't know, don't know what the issue is, but, uh, they, they couldn't get filled. I think they probably had two candidates that just something came up. Couldn't, couldn't hit it. 
Oh, that stinks. But SA on for for, uh, for anyone that wants to join out there because uh, there, there's always opportunity. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. We have a question about the BDD program. What is the exact? Well, what what exact question? Um, you just wanted to give us a brief a, a brief on the on the program, or is there something specific? Because that's a pretty broad uh, pretty broad statement. But it looks like um, Randy Felix had a question. I have a question. I'm 100 percent P and T. I have more claims that. Uh, so Randy Felix, thank you, sir. I have more claims that need to be looked at, and I get a percentage of SMC. Should I bother? Uh, referral the other claims I was told to just forget it well I don't know who would tell you to just forget it but it, yeah I mean if you're 60 percent over 100 percent um, every claim 60 percent over you get a, you get an extra little uh, bit of bit of um, compensation there so I would definitely look into getting you know if you think that those claims that you, you have enough built up their secondaries or or even primary claims that are built up I would definitely look into getting that because you you know if you're not you're cheating yourself out of a few hundred bucks you know uh, possibly per month so definitely get on those um get on those claims even if you're 100 p and t i'm a i'm 100 p and t as well but um i'm at if you look at my regular human math i'm at 330 percent total um so that brings me a few i get a few uh, smcs for mine as well so it's pretty nice and you know being a single guy with no kids single not as is not have i don't have any um dependents um so that's still a nice little extra extra little bit there that i get to um that i get to enjoy let me see another question here. Currently in the IDES process, rated at 90%. If the new claim doesn't get me to 100, can you guys help? I would sure like to think we can, Lee. Um, I would definitely, definitely encourage you to get signed up with the elite program so you can get a coach, get that one-on-one -on -one coaching, that that uh, strategy. And then uh, if you need any of the uh, the uh, medical, independent medical uh, opinions, then, um, you know, in order to get your claim pushed through a little bit uh, with more firepower behind it, I think that's definitely something that we can help you out with. So definitely get signed up with that elite membership, talk to a coach and see what we can't do for you. <clears throat> can you work law enforcement at hundred percent P and T Jared Manbeck? Yes, you can. My friend, you can also have, you know, you can also have your firearms. You can also hold a top secret security clearance. I did both. So yes, you can. And I'm hundred percent for combat PTSD. The only thing I can't do uh, without a waiver is fly commercial aircraft. So, and, and then again, if, if the, uh, if the FAA deems me waiver worthy, I could also do that. So yes, you can work, you can work law enforcement. Yeah. The only real restriction to that would be medication that you're on. Um, right. Be barriers yeah. to getting waiver get waiver. Yep. Absolutely. Let's see Don Susan, my son is active duty. His paperwork is at uh, AFPC waiting on a percentage was told four weeks to get his uh, decided percentage, but we are going on 10 Anything you can do to expedite. So the VA is very um, unpredictable, right? They are a big, big organization. Um, there's lots and lots of veterans out there submitting claims. If they told you four weeks and it went 10, it's likely just, you know, it got piled up and, you know, but if you want to do anything to expedite, you can always give them a call at the White House hotline or the 1-800-827-1000 number just to check on the claim, see kind of where it's at. Um, if there's anything you need to do, to um you know if, if if they're missing paperwork if they're missing something um they'll be able to help you out with that lee goldman yeah, once you're 100 oh good go ahead dr sean oh, just on don's too it also depends on on where it's at um because mm -hmm. if it's still with the uh, on on the air because I, I assume if it's with the air force personnel command it, he may still be in in the um the the med board process it, it looks like that's very he's very similar to to lee's situation we're in the IDES, the, the med board, getting out the transitory state. Um, so it, it still may be in, in, that, in that separation. Um, so it may not even be with the VA uh, itself. Um, so it, it, it kind of depends on who's got the football, so to speak. If it's with the VA, yeah, it, it does take a while with them, but it may not even be with them either. Uh, so it, it, it would definitely be worth a call to the VA and see, yeah, do you have it? Um, but then if they don't, then you pick up the phone, you call the Air Force Personnel Command, see, uh, do you have it? Um, and, and and start running it down, you know, kind of pick up the phone, just keep running it down the line from there. Right. And Lee, um, Lee Gallman asked, um, once you're 100% P&T, do you have to do the evaluations every five years or so? The answer is no. Um, once you get that permanent and total, there's no more evaluations. You are deemed permanent and total. The word permanent sticks there. So, nope, you are good to go once you're 100% P&T. 
Uh, Jeremy Hendricks asks, is there a cost for coaching and help or is it free? There is no initial cost for the, uh, the elite program. The only time that you would, that you would uh, pay VACI is if you win your claim is if you, um, you know, if, if you get an increase in your, in your percentage rate, that is the only time. Uh, do you continue to file after you rate hundred percent or do you stop? I was told don't stir the pot 220%. Randy, I don't know who told you that brother. But uh, if you still feel like you have some some conditions that could uh, that could increase you past two hundred twenty percent total, then I would go for it. Um, you know, because you never know. You never know if you're going to win and get that extra get that extra little bit. You know. <clears throat> yeah, with Lee being I, so, I, I get your point on being lost with the IDES and you know, kind of needing PNT. I, I I see your comments, brother. Um, don't worry about it. It'll come. One, you're still in. You know, you, you still have access to, to getting things connected, to building your medical caseload. Um, take advantage of what you learned today. Um, communicate, build, pad your medical records. Um, you, you're in a good spot. Take advantage of what's there. And if, if you have any doubts, sign up. Well, we'd love to work with you, help you out and get you what you need. Absolutely. All right, folks, I'm sorry to cut you off. We got about five minutes, four minutes left. I um, just want to reiterate the, uh, you know, the importance of this VACI elite program. I'll tell you what, you know, I wish I could sit here and answer questions all day for you folks, but you know, that's part of what you get when you sign up for the elite membership, you get not only with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, right. Um, you get the strategy sessions, you get the, the claim submission preps, you or um, you know, guides, you get the CNP preps, you get access to all of our live classes, you know, again, like three live classes a day, typically Monday through Friday, you get coffee with the coaches every single morning, Monday through Friday. You get the Saturday classes. You get the, you know, the specialty classes. So if you if you need help with HLRs, you know, there's uh, mental health Mondays. There's sleep apnea classes. There's high value claims of all sorts. You know, migraines, GERD. You know, all the uh, all the musculoskeletal stuff. You know, if you need help to re if you need help with your claims, reach out. Sign up for that elite membership. You don't pay anything right up front. You don't pay anything unless you win your claim. So you know, get a coach. <laughs> I would love to help you. I, I'll tell you what, this isn't a job for us. This is, this is not only is it, it's my vocation. Sure. But I get to talk to folks like you every day to other veterans who I can connect with, who I shared a common bond, you know, and it's uh, you guys make my day that much better because I get to sit there and try to help you and continue serving my country in, in the, in this little small way that I can. Dr. Sean, any last faults, but uh, last thoughts, brother. Yeah, no, brother. It's really all about veterans serving veterans. Um, it, at least for me, you know, it's um, it's it's a pleasure to serve and uh, love to help you out. You know, the, the biggest thing is taking care of yourself. Uh, I'll say uh, when it comes to building your claim, let us know if you need anything. Uh, we are here to help. We are here to serve. Uh, join the elite program. Love to help you out. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And until next time, see you later.